Hey what's going on guys, Robert Thompson Nishan, welcome back to the channel and in this video I want to talk about my journey into pharmaceutical industry and the reason I want to make this video is because I think it will be very helpful for a lot of pharmacists that are interested in getting into industry um, to actually look at my journey to get some advice on or just to like look at how you can actually strategize your own path into industry. So I want to start off by talking about why I actually got interested in joining pharmaceutical industry and the reason why I, start, I got interested was during my fourth year I was actually looking at having rotations in retail and hospital. Uh, when I was working in retail, I've been working in retail for like the last like couple years now. I think now I'm at six years now. Um, so I got to the point where I feel pretty comfortable in retail, which is kind of a problem for me because I kind of want to be like more um, intellectually challenged. And in hospital, I just didn't feel like it was the right fit for me. So overall, I really wanted to experience if there's any other roles I can actually look into which actually led me into one of my classes where I had a class on called personal management of pharmacy practice. And it was the first time I started to hear words about like communication, leadership, and try to under be empathetic to other person. And these, a lot of these very, very important business acumen things in a pharmacist manner, because a lot of pharmacists are leaders in their space. If you look at most pharmacies, they're leaders in their space. And also like there's like chief pharmacy officer, and I just want to really understand like the different roles that pharmacists can play outside of the traditional roles and how they actually are managing to be leaders and take up the helm of the healthcare space. So I actually got into this class, I actually really enjoyed it and I talked to my mentor in the class, the professor, and he actually told me I should look into industry because industry has a lot of pharmacists that are working and have these same business acumen things that they're working on and they're doing it in their own respective roles. So that actually led me to like, okay, I'm interested in pharmacy industry now. So now is my fifth year, and my fifth year I was able to actually pick out rotations for my sixth year. And during that time period, I just wanted to look at every single non-traditional role that pharmacists could play into, because like I said before, you hear about a lot of these roles, and you don't really understand, you know, like what medical writing is, or nuclear pharmacy is, or medical affairs is, you know, as a student, because you're focused on mostly just either getting a residency or working in a hospital or you were focused on retail. So it's very hard to actually get these experiences and actually learn about these things hands on. So I didn't actually notice that at first, but I just wanted to look at every single role that was non-traditional would end up leading me to look at a lot of roles that were in industry. So my rotations that I had, I had rotations in medical writing, which a lot of you guys talk about with me is because like it's so interesting and you're basically working on like clinical trials, like you're working on like a lot of the package inserts, you're working on um, gathering data so that way you can make like a landscape deck or a PowerPoint presentation. And then I got a rotation in pharmacy administration where I got to work on like the PNT committee and got to understand why hospital systems add drugs to the formulary list so that they can actually use it for patients, which is very interesting to look at. Then I had a role in medical affairs. Medical affairs probably the most recognizable, common role for pharmacists to be into. Then after medical affairs, then I got a role in health administration, which I actually got through my connections, which is also very interesting because you got to see the business side of healthcare. So at this point, um, it was around like the August, September time period, and I kind of decided to myself, okay, I'm really interested in industry. Even though I don't feel prepared to work in the industry, I really want to just get a little career fellowship and try to get one. So at this point, I was in a very, very tough rotation at the time where I was working with patients one-on-one -on -one, and I was seeing about like 14 to 15 patients a day, doing patient workups all day. And on top of that, I had to actually start getting serious about industry because at, before this time period, I didn't even have a CV. So I had to create a CV, I had to try to get letter recommendations, which is pretty easy for me because I had good experiences in all my rotations previously. And most of my classes I did decently well in, so I just asked them for letter recommendations, which went pretty well for me. And I also work, so on top of that, I had a lot of different places I can look for to look to actually get letter recommendations from, which is very good, but I wouldn't recommend starting that late. On top of that, I then had to get a letter of intents and cover letters done, which is also very difficult. On top of that, I had to also like look at getting mentors and then also like getting uh, interviews with people that were in the industry so that way I could actually learn about their role and what they actually do. So at this point I'm pretty much super stressed out and I'm like working like non-stop every day and I actually apply for interviews 
And I actually got very lucky because in the fellowship process, I applied for like, I think 12 places, I got 10 interviews, and I got, I think, multiple different final round interviews. Even though I did all that, I actually did not get a fellowship, which I actually felt pretty down about at first. But now looking back, I actually reflect upon it and I was realized that like, I actually did pretty well for the opposite the amount of time I had and how much I had to constantly like learn on the fly and be very resourceful. So I ended up finishing up school where I had a rotation in nuclear pharmacy, which is also a pretty good role to look at if you want to get a role right after school. And I got a role working in insurance companies for Medicaid and Medicare. And once I finished school, I had to make a decision of like, okay, do I want to work in retail, try to go for a residency or work in the hospital, try to get a hospital role. And for me, I just knew that I wanted to work in industry. So I had to make the decision where like, I thought to myself, you know, I have all these great rotations, internships that I have under my belt. I learned a lot in that process and I did pretty well trying to get a fellowship previously where I literally almost got a fellowship even though I only had like a month to actually prepare for everything. So that's when I decided, okay, I'm gonna be very strategic and making sure that I could actually get a fellowship the next year because the fellowship process starts again like around August, September, and I graduated around May. So at that point, I decided to actually pay for a certification which actually allowed me to learn about industry and all different functional areas in industry so I can actually know what the day-to-day -day role is and what questions they usually are looking at to solve. Because if you think about it, every single role in industry, they're basically looking for what problem they want to solve and how they can make the process smoother in the future for the drug development process and also for the drug approval process. So I really want to understand each functional area so that way I can understand how my role can help someone else. And if you think about it, a lot of roles in industry kind of work together with other roles. So it's not just good just to only understand your role, it's also good to understand the roles of the people that you're working with. So after that process, I paid for certification. I learned a lot about industry from that certification. I actually ended up going to an industry pharmacy conference. And in that conference, I also got to learn about what employees are looking for in their candidates. Besides my interviews, my fellowship process, I actually got to learn what they're looking for before I actually went through that process. And that also helped me cater my resume slash CV, my interview process a lot better. And actually, when I went to the industry pharmacy conference, I actually got met my employer. And it was funny because I actually talked to them for a little bit. And then they asked me if I was interested in the role in clinical research. And at first, I actually did not understand a lot about it. So I had to kind of learn on my own. But the good thing was that I went through the entire process. And I also had certification where I actually worked on that. And I was able to actually really easily understand what they actually do as a company and what they actually work on and what the role would actually entail. So once I got all that down pat, they asked me for my CV, which I already had because I finished the fellowship process. So I just changed a little bit because I had some new, better experiences I can put on to it. And I also had some feedback from other people that I interviewed with previously that said they wanted me to focus on some parts better. So then I went through that process and I actually ended up getting a job offer after two weeks. A uh, full-time offer as opposed to getting a fellowship, which is actually a little bit better. But yeah, I went through that entire process and I went through a lot faster than a fellowship because it was a job that actually was looking for hiring people and I actually was able to cater a lot of my experiences to what the job actually would entail in the future. So I actually ended up getting the job and yeah, that's how I got into pharmaceutical industry. Okay, so now that I finished how I actually ended up getting a job in the pharmaceutical industry, I actually wanna share some key lessons that I learned during this process. So the first key lesson I would definitely say is just definitely have confidence in your abilities because for me, I think one of the reasons why I actually was able to do so much in such a short amount of time period is because I had a lot of confidence in myself. Even though I may not be unprepared before, previously, just being able to have a doctor degree is such an important achievement to have so just me knowing that I had that ability to like work very diligently, be very resourceful, and be able to learn on the fly is such an important skill set to have, even if you look for a full-time job or fellowship or are going through that process, because you're gonna constantly have to be very confident in what you're doing in order to actually show others that you can actually get it done properly. My second key lesson I would definitely say is use everything as learning experience, because I think the fact that I even was able to go through that fellowship process is mind-blowing to me to this day because how little I prepared for it 
but I was able to figure things out on the fly and learn so much through that process. And that actually helped me so much because now when I look for an actual job, it was so much easier because the fellowship process is super competitive. So like the fact that I was able to get that far, able to get through so many interviews and learn so much on the fly without having much guidance, it just allowed me to learn so much in that process. And then even when I did not get my fellowship, I ended up having to keep on learning on top of that. So I actually got feedback from interviews I went to previously and asked them what could I have done better. I actually reached out to mentors that were in the industry that I could actually look up to and actually say, you know, what did you do to help you in your process? And even my interviews, I had such good interviews sometimes where even though, even though I didn't get the role, I would talk to them and just be like, you know, what are some advice you have for me? And I would have like relationships with them now where I can talk to them on a day-to-day -day basis and just like talk to them about certain trends in industry and stuff like that. Just because of the fact that I went through that process. So I made a lot of great friends in that process and I'm learning from them constantly through like reaching out on LinkedIn or just having to like to talk to them on a day-to-day -day basis. And then my last tip is just gonna be don't take things personally. And this is a hard one for me to take because like looking for that fellowship, it's like so easy to be like put your entire like, you know, personality into it, you're putting so many hours into it. And if you don't get it, it is like gut wrenching, you know? Like you really feel it. But you also gotta understand how competitive it is. Like I said this before. When you, once you get through like the first or second round of the interviews, you realize that you're a pretty good candidate, you know? You got through the interview process, you got interviewed in the first place, and now you're actually in the final round or you're in the later stages of interviews, you're a good candidate, you know? But the problem is that like it's so competitive that there's so many different things that the employer could be looking for or there could be like just minor differences that they see in another person that they don't see in you or they might think it make them a better fit. And that's something that you gotta take on the chin, you know? It's something that even if like it happens, you gotta understand that you can still be a good candidate, but you cannot get the role because there's someone else that wants to get the role instead of you. So that's why it's important to just keep on learning, keep on making yourself a better person overall, and eventually you will find the role that fits best for you, and you will find the opportunity that works best for you, and sometimes it can even be better than the opportunity that you looked for in the past. So that's the end of the video for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out. Bye.